Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session, Revisit Your Time on Campus with the University Archives Collections, which is being presented by our University Archivist, Matthew Lyons. Uh, we have a couple other events planned for this term, although this is the last Wednesdays at noon session until the fall, and I'll drop a link into the chat for our calendar so you can see what else we have going on over the next two weeks before the spring term ends. So before we get started, general housekeeping items, we are recording this session and I will include a link to the video later this week if you're interested in revisiting it. And please stay muted throughout the presentation. We'll take all the questions at the end. And I think that's it for me. So Matthew, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Um, hello, everybody. And um, as Stacy said, I'm Matthew Lyons, Drexel University Archivist. And um, I guess just to, to start off with, I wanna say that this webinar is primarily intended for anybody who's been part of the Drexel community, but has been away from campus for some years or some decades, and who is interested in exploring historical materials that can help with reconnecting with those past experiences at Drexel. So, uh, you may be a Drexel alum, or you may be a former faculty member or staff member, or also you might be um, a family member, a spouse or a child or, or a friend of, of an alum who's interested in learning about Drexel for sort of that family connection or that, that friendship. Um, and along with exploring old memories, the historical materials I'm going to talk about can also help put those memories in a kind of context and help us see a larger picture of what was happening at Drexel at that time, and also help us trace um, changes over time in the university and in the larger society. Uh, so, whoops, it is not letting me advance. There we go. Okay, so, um, to start off, let me just um, outline what I'm going to talk about in this webinar. I will start by giving you a quick overview about Drexel University archives, what we do, the kind of collections we have, and how people use them. And then the bulk of the webinar um, will be devoted to giving you a tour of some of the most useful materials in our collections for helping you reconnect with your time on campus, such as yearbooks, newspapers, photographs, and others. I will then say a little bit about the different ways you can get access to our collections um, and how you can help to document Drexel history by donating memorabilia to Drexel University Archives. After the presentation, I will certainly be happy to answer questions. And if you're watching this webinar uh, and the recording, if you're watching the recording, um, you can also send me questions via email at archives at drexel.edu. And I'd be happy to answer them after the fact. And I will re repeat that email address later. So um, what is Drexel University Archives? We are a program of Drexel University Libraries and we're located in the basement of Hagerty Library at the corner of 33rd and Market Streets. And the library is just across from the statue of Mary of the Dragon. The archive's main purpose is to document the history of Drexel as an institution and as an academic community, with the exception of the College of Medicine, which has its own archives. We collect official institutional records from departments and offices across the university, from the Board of Trustees and the Office of the President on down. We also collect other materials related to the history of Drexel, such as the records of student organizations, memorabilia compiled by students, um, academic and research files of faculty and former faculty members. We also collect certain kinds of scholarly output from the university, 
including graduate theses and dissertations, as well as books authored by Drexel faculty and staff. We also collect materials that document the history of the Drexel family, that is the relatives and descendants of Drexel University founder, Anthony Drexel. And we have a small collection of rare books. Um, our collection materials are in a lot of different kinds of formats, um, from handwritten letters and diaries to digital computer files in various formats, and from little note cards and miniature books, all the way up to large posters and architectural drawings. Our collections get used in a lot of different ways, such as class assignments uh, and presentations to classes, such as you could see in the upper left here. Uh, scholarly research projects, our works get uh, cited or included in various kinds of publications. And we get a lot of inquiries about family history. In most cases, our collections are available for use by all members of the Drexel community and the general public. Um, there, are, there are some things that are limited for uh, a certain audience or limited for a, a period of time. A few of our collections can be viewed directly online, but in most cases, if you want to look at our materials, you need to come in to the archives or file a request to have items scanned and sent to you. And I'll say more about um, the, those processes later in the presentation. Um, now, the, just to say a little bit about the, the different kinds of collection materials at Drexel University Archives that are, I think, particularly helpful for revisiting one's time on campus. You know, there's a lot of different things that I could talk about, but uh, in order to keep this presentation manageable, I decided to focus on six different um, types of materials. And those are the, the ones listed here. So uh, yearbooks, student newspapers, photograph collections, um, the records of clubs and organizations, including uh, fraternities and sororities, as well as other types of organizations, uh, sports-related materials, and archived websites. And so now I'm gonna look at each of these different uh, six types in, in order. So uh, to start with your books, this, I think, is clearly the place to start here in, in this uh, uh, presentation because um, a college or a university yearbook is really designed in, in large part to help alumni to revisit their time on campus. The main yearbook at Drexel since 1913 has been the Lexard, which of course is Drexel spelled backwards. Um, and each issue of the Lexard includes some standard elements um, that uh, you can find in, you know, fairly standard in, in your books in general uh, about a particular academic year. So it, they include names and photographs of graduating seniors, uh, information about uh, some of the major academic units. Uh, sometimes there's information about prominent uh, faculty members or administrators. Um, and there's also uh, a lot of uh, coverage of uh, prominent campus events, sports teams, fraternities, sororities, other organizations, and a lot of photos of um, campus scenes. Um, at Drexel, another thing that it is important to mention about the yearbooks is that University Archives has made most of them available online through the library's website. So, you know, going through the, the library catalog, you can uh, uh, pull up um, a full text uh, facsimile of a yearbook and then browse through that issue page by page on your computer. You can also search within 
that issue uh, for a specific name or a phrase. You know, it, it might be a, a, a look for yourself or family member or or the name of a, a particular club that um, you, you belong to, something like that. You can also download the, the whole issue of the yearbook if you want to have your own digital copy. Uh, next on the list is student newspapers. The Triangle has been Drexel's weekly student paper since 1926, and it contains, uh, of course, news and photos about the university and um, campus events. Uh, and here we see a couple of issues that um, highlight uh, a tuition increase and also the um, discontinuation of the football team that Drexel had up until the mid seventies. Um, you can also get uh, Drexel student perspectives on local, national and international events. Um, even the ads in the, the Triangle or other student newspapers can do a lot to kind of conjure up uh, the style and the feeling of a particular time. University Archives has paper copies of most of the issues of the Triangle, going back to the beginning. And um, some of those issues are uh, currently available online. But it's it's kind of uh, spotty as far as which ones you can you can find that way, uh, and that is something that we're going to we're going to be putting more issues online. But it's a but it's a long term project. The third type of uh, collection material I want to talk about is uh, photograph collections. We have um, tens of thousands of photographs that we've received from different. Uh, campus offices such as university communications. Most of these photographs we've organized into collections by type, such as events, people, clubs and organizations, athletics, and buildings. On uh, this slide, we see a photo from a fashion show, I believe from 1977, that's part of the events photographs collection. And uh, at the right, there is a group shot of the club that, uh, as a team, built a uh, Formula One racer using composite uh, materials. Uh, and that, that image is from the clubs and organizations uh, photographs collection. Most of our photographs are not currently online, but many of them have been scanned. And we have the digital facsimile stored on a server so we can often fill requests for specific images relatively quickly. Campus organizations play an important role at Drexel and in many students' experiences uh, while on campus. A major subset of campus organizations is fraternities and sororities. And University Archives has collection materials documenting over 30 different uh, Greek, -like or Greek life organizations at Drexel. These include materials such as newsletters, programs and invitations, photos of members and of events, memorabilia and artifacts such as plaques and t-shirts. Uh, on this slide, we see the uh, cover of uh, a newsletter from Drexel's chapter of the Lambda Chi Alpha Fraternity, and also a page from a scrapbook that was compiled by uh, members of the Delta Zeta sorority. Both of these uh, items, I believe, are from 1984. Other student organizations besides sororities and fraternities are also represented in our collections. We have uh, a lot of historical materials from WKDU, the Drexel student radio station, including flyers, newsletters, and audio recordings. And in 2021, we hosted an exhibit to help WKDU celebrate its 50th anniversary. We also have a wonderful set of posters and programs from the Drexel Players Theater Group. On this slide, uh, we see a poster from the player's performance of the play Dracula. 
as well as a flyer from one of WKDU's annual fundraising events. Some of the other student organizations for which we have collections include the Undergraduate Student Government Association, um, Beta Phi Mu, which is the Honor Society for Library Students, and the Society for the Advancement of Women Scientists and Engineers. Another important part of campus life is sports and Drexel University Archives has collections documenting prominent sports teams such as uh, basketball, lacrosse and rowing, as well as sports that don't get quite as much attention such as archery and badminton. Both men's and women's teams are represented and the kinds of materials we have include game programs and schedules rosters, score sheets, press releases and newspaper clippings, um, and photographs. We also have um, extensive historical records from the Department of Athletics as a whole, including photos and information sheets on a lot of individual athletes. The last type of historical material I wanna highlight from our collections is archived websites. Over the past few decades, Drexel University, like most organizations, has increasingly relied on the internet and the World Wide Web to record and share information. Some of what's published on the web is pretty, pretty stable and pretty static, but most of it changes, it might change every year or every month, or in some cases, every day. So it's easy for web content and even whole websites to disappear without a trace. To deal with this challenge, Drexel University Archives uses a service that records and preserves a copy of websites that we designate at regular intervals. This collection of uh, archived websites is open to the public so that anyone can view them and search through them. The slide here shows the homepage of this uh, archived websites collection from Drexel University. We've been archiving Drexel's web presence this way since 2009. And over time, the collection has grown to include hundreds of websites, blogs, podcasts, e-newsletters, and other online publications. You can, you can find output from many different academic departments and uh, colleges within the university, uh, campus offices such as student life and university communications, and student publications such as Maya Literary Magazine, as well as the past uh, several years of the Triangle newspaper. You can find uh, decades worth of official university publications like the annual course catalogs and student handbooks. You can also see how the look of websites has changed over time. At the left on this slide, we see a 2010 snapshot of the Useful Chem Project blog, which used a very standard kind of early blog template. Um, and at right, from a couple of years later, is a somewhat more modern looking page for the university commencement. I've given you a sampling of some of the kinds of materials that University Archives has to offer. If you're interested in looking at some of the materials I've described or our other collections, there are a few different ways to go about it. As I mentioned, a few of our collections, primarily the lectured news, uh, yearbooks, uh, as well as some of the other yearbooks uh, and our archived websites, these uh, are available online and you can browse through them directly without having to consult with uni uh, university archive staff. It's a priority for us to put more materials online, but this actually takes a, a lot of work and we have a long way to go. In most cases, if you want to look at our collections, you need to make an appointment and come to our reading room where we will be very happy to help you it's important to contact us in advance so that we can locate the relevant materials 
And in many cases, we can point you to online collection guides to help you refine your search. The third option is to send us questions. If you have a broad question or are interested in looking at a lot of material, you probably need to come in to the archives. But if your question is very specific, you're looking for a particular piece of information or a few specific documents or images, archive staff may be able to go to the collections for you, pull the information or copy the items and send them to you. In general, if you're interested in using University Archives collections, the most important thing to remember is ask us. Ask University Archives staff for help. We will work with you to identify and locate the materials that will be most helpful to you. And um, the best way to reach us is by email at archives at drexel.edu. Lastly, I wanna ask for your help. University Archives relies on donations and transfers of collection materials to help us document Drexel history. If you have memorabilia from your time at Drexel, if you have records of a campus or alumni organization, or if you have other materials that document how Drexel has affected your life or your career, please consider donating them to the University Archives, where we will preserve them and make them available for people to use and learn from. If you're interested in making a collection donation, please contact us first. We can assess whether the materials would be a good fit for Drexel University Archives, and we can address any questions or concerns that you might have. So that concludes my presentation, and I will leave you with our contact information. As I said, our email address is archives at drexel.edu. And if you want to reach me specifically, uh, I'm reachable at matthew.lyons at drexel.edu. Uh, I've also included um, the URL for the University Archives website, which is part of the Drexel University Libraries website. And it, it is library.drexel.edu slash archives. Thanks.